In today's tutorial, we'll be going over how you can create pixel art images using Affinity Designer. And the example I'll be using here is this vector graphic over here on the left that I started out with, and then this pixel art over here on the right that we end up with after we're done applying this effect. And if you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing in this tutorial, I will have a link in the description of the video to where you can download this graphic if you'd like. So getting us started here in a new document, as you can see, I have my graphic imported. I have everything grouped together. The first thing we want to do is set up our grid. So come up here to where, uh, where it says view and go down to grid and axis manager. And from this menu over here, I'm going to choose basic and where it says spacing, I'm going to change that from 64 all the way to one. And again, divisions, we want that set to one as well. Then go ahead and click close once you're finished. And now we have to turn on the visibility of the grid. If your grid isn't visible yet, just come up here to where it says view and where it says show grid, go ahead and click on that. Now, if you're zoomed out like me, you're not going to see the grid because the grid is actually really small being one pixel in size. So if I hold control and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in, you can see that the grid lines start to appear, which is useful because we're going to use these grid lines to generate our pixel art. So let me zoom back out. What I want to do now is go over to the pixel persona, which is located over here. And now that we're in the pixel persona, I'm going to take my subject here that I'd like to trace and I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to hold shift in the keyboard uh, to lock the aspect ratio and scale this down a lot. And I'm going to zoom in again, just hold control and roll up the mouse wheel. And I want to I want to scale this down to a pretty small size so that the pixels are pretty big in comparison to the rest of the design. I'm going to make the width of this somewhere in the ballpark of 30 pixels, I'd say. Maybe even I'll change this down here. I'll just type in 30 and there we go. Now let me zoom in a little bit. I'm looking at the top left corner of this uh, graphic right here. I want to place this evenly in that uh, cell right there in one of these grid lines. doesn't have to be exact. As you'll see, this is not going to be exact, but close enough is good enough. So uh, once that's done, let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to grab the pixel brush tool now, which is located over here uh, where it says pixel tool. Click on that. And the settings we want to use for the pixel tool up here where it says width, make sure this is one pixel. Opacity, make sure that's 100%. Flow, 100%. And hardness, 100%. Now, if we come over here to the color tab, as you can see, we have the color black enabled for our pixel, our pixel brush, which is good because we're going to use that to trace an outline of the subject here. Before we do that, though, we have to create a new pixel layer. So come down here to the layers menu. Click this button down here that says add pixel layer. And now we have a pixel layer. I'm actually going to click and drag this to the top of the stacking order here so that it's on top like that. And now I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to start using my pixel brush to fill in the pixels tracing around the subject here. And a, a little shortcut that you can use, let's say you want to draw a straight line. Instead of drawing a straight line straight across, all you have to do, click once to add a brush and then hold shift and then click over here and it'll continue that line for you. And then you could just continue on with what you were drawing like this. So I'm going to put this over there like that. That's looking pretty good. And then I'll close this one up. I'm going to hold shift and click over here. Now we have that outlined. Now I'm going to go over here and outline this as well. Now, if you notice here, it's not exactly on the perimeter, but that's okay. It's never going to line up perfectly uh, on a pixel by pixel basis. But like I said before, close enough is good enough. So let me go ahead and fill this in as well. Now, if you notice, these two sides of hair over here are not symmetrical, so I'm not going to get exactly the same result. It's not going to be exactly the same width in terms of pixels, but that's okay because uh, it doesn't have to be exact. There we go. That's looking good. Close that up. Now I'm going to make these eyebrows over here. Now this I'm going to be a little more careful of. I want to preserve some aspect of symmetry in here. If you notice, this eyebrow starts two boxes in or two pixels in. Same thing over here. It's not quite exact, but I just want to make sure that I'm using the same amount of pixels for each side here. So I'm going to color in four boxes starting from two boxes in. I'm going to do the same thing over here, making sure I'm staying on the same horizontal plane like that. And now I'm going to fill in the eyes. And I'm going to freestyle the eyes a little bit because it's not exactly on the pixel grid. So I'm going to go with something like that right there. If at any point you want to see how your design looks, uh, your pixel art looks without the original graphic in the, getting in the way. All you have to do is come over here to your layers menu and uncheck this box right here to turn off the visibility temporarily. And then you can see how your design is coming along as you can see there. So let me put that back on. Let me zoom back in over here. I'm going to make this eye over here as well. 
fill that in. And now I will make the nose. This one's gonna be a little different because it kind of gets in the way here of the eye. So I'm gonna make this one a little, a little shorter than it is originally. Good enough. Now I will fill in the mustache over here. Again, we're two boxes in from the edge, two boxes in from the edge. There we go, looking good. Fill this in like that. Or you know what, maybe undo that. Maybe I'll go like that. Yeah, you'll have to experiment with different things. If you, if you don't like how it came out, you can just press Control Z on the keyboard to undo it. Or another thing that you could do to erase your pixel brush is hold the Control key and then click on it and then it'll erase it like that. So that's another helpful tip to keep in mind. Okay, so this is four boxes right here. I want to maintain some symmetry here. One, two, three, four. There we go. One box up here. And then come up here and fill that in like that. And that's that right there is looking pretty good. Now I'll close in the mouth right here. Again, not exactly precise, but that's okay. And I'm going to finish outlining my subject here. So I'll come over here and fill in the ears. Or not fill it in, but outline it rather. Bring that to the top. Try to make this ear somewhat symmetrical. If it's not exact, that's okay. There we go. And the inside of the ear over here. There we go. And then I'm just going to finish up the outside of the face right here. I'm going to fill this in like that. And I'm going to try to mirror what I did over here on this side on a pixel by pixel basis, just to make sure it has some semblance of symmetry left in there. There we go. And then close that up. All right, that's looking good right there. So now we have our subject outlined. If I turn off the visibility, you can see we have our pixel drawing outlined. So all we have to do now is fill this in. To fill this in with color, we're just going to we're going to oscillate back and forth between the dropper tool over here or the color picker and then the bucket fill tool. So to show you what I mean here, uh, let me grab the dropper tool. The keyboard shortcut for the dropper tool is, or the color picker is the letter I on the keyboard. And the keyboard shortcut for the pixel tool is B. The keyboard shortcut for the flood fill tool or the bucket tool is G. I'm going to be using those keyboard shortcuts to toggle back and forth between those because it's, it's a lot more efficient than coming over here and clicking. So I'm going to press I to get the color picker. I'm going to choose the color inside of here, this color of brown that I'd like to fill in the hair with. And if you notice, it applied it over here in my color menu. And now I can just grab my fill tool, letter G, and fill that in like that. And if I turn off the visibility of my layer, you can see it filled it in as intended. Now the mustache is the same color as that top piece of hair, so I'm going to fill that in as well. And now I'm going to go back to my color picker, sample that color right there, back to the fill tool and fill that in. Do the same thing over here. Sample this color, this skin tone right here. Back to the fill tool. Fill that in like that. Fill in the ears as well. Let me temporarily disable the visibility to see how we're coming along here. It's looking good. I just got to fill in the nose and the ears, the inner ears, which are the same color. Let me grab the color picker. Sample that color right there. Grab the uh, flood fill tool and fill that in like that. And then at this point, I'm just going to turn off the visibility of the original object because at this point, it, you can't really see it anyway. And uh, it's just getting in the way. Okay, so let me change this to white. And now I could fill that in. And there we go. Now we have our pixel art filled in. So at this point, you could, you could call it a day right here if you want. This is some pixel art. If you want to add a nice little touch to this, you can add some shading. Shading isn't something that I'm particularly specializing in, but I'll, I'll give it an attempt here. As you can see in my design here, I added a little bit of shading around the skin and the hair like that. So let me show you how to do that if you'd like. Uh, let me go back to my color picker by pressing I. Select that. And I want to make this a slightly lighter shade like that. And now I can go back to my pixel tool and fill that in. I want to make sure I have this color enabled right here. I can create some, I guess you can call it like a highlight or a reflection of light coming off of the hair like that. Maybe I'll bring that all the way across. And I'll do the same thing over here, but I'll have to use a different shade. So let me go back to my color picker, make this a little lighter, back to the pixel tool, and there we go. Filling that in like so. 
And I think this for this one, I'll add the same thing. I just want to go back and select this color. I'll add a little bit of reflection of light off the top here like that. There we go. Uh, probably not the best look here, but I'm just doing this to give you an idea. Like I said, shading isn't really my thing. I'm, my background's in logo design, so I don't really, I'm not really into this advanced illustration. Uh, let me grab this skin tone over here. Make this a little darker. There we go. Back to the pixel tool. And I'll add a little bit of shading over here on the left-hand side. There we go. And maybe I'll add like a little bit of a darker shadow over here. So let me sample that color. Make that a little darker. Back to my pixel brush. And there we go. Okay, so I think we're looking pretty good here. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything from my original design. Okay, yeah, it looks like I got everything. So uh, I think that should do it. Uh, at this point, once you're finished, what you can do is, let me turn off the visibility of this as well. Once you're finished, you can get rid of the pixel, the pixel grid by going to view and where it says show grid, go ahead and disable that. And now if you zoom out, hold control and roll down the mouse wheel, uh, our, our, our artwork is finished, but the problem is, as you can see, it's pretty small. So to enlarge it, all we have to do is click and drag like this, hold shift on the keyboard to lock the aspect ratio, and there we go, there is our pixel art. And as you can see, the wonderful thing about doing this in Affinity Designer is that you can scale this up infinitely without any quality loss at all. There's no pixelation there other than the intended pixelation of the artwork. And uh, there you go. From there, you can, you can just export that, or you can even take it into the designer persona and trace a vector from it. Uh, but yeah, I think that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about creating simple pixel art using Affinity Designer. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.